Okay, well, I'm continuing to work with these uh, uh, lead and uh, alum and uh, lead oxide cells, rechargeable cells. And this one here that I made up, which was three plates, so two negatives on the outside and a positive in the middle, with the uh, alum distilled water and then the lead oxide and this linotype lead, which has a uh, antimony and some tin in it for stiffness, so it doesn't bend and uh, they use it for the printing linotype and it's thin. It made great plates for batteries but um, this was the most successful one that I built. It holds the most amount of energy and I wondered if I could shrink that down and make it the size of a double A battery and w put it in some of these receptacles for some of my toys here that use a double A battery and I thought well I wonder if I can do that. A bunch of this stuff here that I built uh, is this tabletop uh, stuff that has a, a thing for a double A battery and so I thought well why not try it so I made one and that's it right there and that is the size of a double A battery right there believe it or not it has a plus on one end and then the two uh, two outer plates are the negative and it fits in uh, this solar cell recharger here just fine and I can I can charge it up with that solar cell or it'll fit in this. This is a 110 uh, outlet charger that if you put another uh, rechargeable AA in there uh, the device uh, will pick it up and charge this one at the same time. It won't do it alone. Uh, there's something about the impedance it doesn't like and uh, only one or two of the ones of these that I've got worked but they work real good and it was kind of neat to make a rechargeable AA battery that would uh, either be able to charge up on that or that. This is what it looks like. It's it's a sandwich. I'm just calling it uh, my homemade rechargeable AA battery, which is the same size as that right there. And it's a sandwich of plates. It's got two negatives on the outside. It has a separator between the negative and the positive in the middle that is um, coated with this lead oxide that I've been showing in the other videos. It's uh, got um, alum and w distilled water mixed with it. It's a paste and you put the paste between these plates and you put it all together and it makes a rechargeable battery and I used a thread and uh, clamped the cell and then whipped it with thread. It's a sailor thing and uh, the whipping uh, holds this all together then just dotted it with the crazy glue to hold it all together and you have to have this wet for it to work if it's dry it doesn't really work the uh, ions can't transfer across but it, it works quite well and I tell you what about two or three years ago somebody had told me I was going to be building my own rechargeable battery I'd have said they were nuts and there it is probably hear that running I would have never guessed that I could build my own rechargeable AA battery and there it is it does not have very much capacity the surface area isn't enough and of course this is a crude homemade device um, but uh, it worked and like I say the the battery was such that I can put it in all my little projects it runs my little uh, spinner motors quite nicely. I put it in a flashlight. It'll run a flashlight uh, but it goes dim real quick. It does not have very much uh, amper hour in it. But uh, it'll charge up to about 1.7, 1.8 volts and then drop down to about a volt and a half. And like I say I really like the fact that I can put it in a regular receptacle in a double A item and it works. This is this little capacitor motor that uh, I used for the testing on everything. Pretty simple. It's got a bearing down there, just one bearing that this sits on, and then the four magnets. The reed switch and that LED is being fired on the flyback of that coil right there. And of course, power source now is that uh, little double A rechargeable battery, homemade. This runs for about an hour on that thing. 
anyway, I just wanted to share uh, share that with folks that this is my uh, homemade rechargeable AA battery. Thanks for watching.